What I'd like to raise very briefly, if I can, is the fact that in many respects, our approach to dealing with poverty, inequality, and support for those who need uh, social protection the most leaves perhaps unattended many issues that I would refer to as below the radar uh, issues because there are serious uh, inequalities apart from you know, um, uh, materialist uh, monetary uh, deprivation. There are many, many other issues of inequality which have all together come to be referred to as intersecting inequalities which keep people below uh, the surface. And very often dealing with their lack of income does not necessarily solve those uh, problems. And I'm just wondering, listen to our three presenters, what scope there is uh, for us to bring in some of those factors or to collaborate through complementary um, programs for us to eradicate those intersecting inequalities, which sometimes even erase the benefits that one might gain from introducing social assistance programs. And I'd just like to use two illustrations as quickly as I can. A lot of the support to African countries is intended to also help um, recruitment of girls into school. At the same time, we might get girls to go to school, but by the time they are in junior high school, in some cultures, they are ready for marriage. Now, there is very little that we do in our social assistance programs which would hold back poor parents from withdrawing their girls uh, from school to put them in marriage, in spite of the you know, support we are giving. And indeed, child marriage has turned out to be uh, one of the big challenges now facing girls' completion in school in rural, poor Africa. So there are those kinds of elements that, in my view, the way we are approaching social protection now um, are not touched you know, by the initiatives. Quickly to another illustration. There's also the challenge of the quality, and I know, I think Santiago dwelt on that briefly, whether or not there's a payoff. I mean, is it worth the investment that uh, workers in contributory schemes, for example, make, um, considering the quality of perhaps services that they receive? And I think you find a lot of this happening, again, in our social assistance programs, where in Ghana, for example, we have virtually enrolled everyone who is benefiting from the cash transfer program on the National Health Insurance Scheme. But they'll be the first to tell you that the quality of health service that they receive is, I don't even want to say very poor, but perhaps not everywhere, but to a large extent not as good as one would expect for basic health care. So in the end, they still have to find money to pay for better health care if they desperately need it. So you have the facility available. People have been enrolled on it, but the average person who is on it is not getting half the quality of support that they are supposed to get. Same goes for basic education in the public education system and several other you know, uh, illustrations that one could give. So whilst we, 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 we dwell on how many people are reached and, you know, there are those issues that I think are undermining the whole effort. And unless we can get to a point where we actually manage to integrate, collaborate, coordinate the limited resources that we are putting into this effort, we might not achieve the sustainable um, social protection support that we want, uh, let alone actually eventually reduce the levels of poverty and inequality that we reserve. I have been flashed the card we've eaten into our discussion time. I'd like to thank you very much for the opportunity. <laughs>